each and every one a very warm welcome this morning. Uh, we thank everyone for tuning in. It's lovely to see so many uh, tuning in and appreciating uh, God's word in the days and in the times uh, we're in. Uh, it's lovely to those in the fellowship who are tuning in. It's lovely for those uh, that are around the area and those from far afield as well. So we give everyone a very warm welcome this morning and we trust as we have uh, this time and this service together uh, that we know the Lord's help and we know uh, his uh, wonderful blessings upon us. Uh, do continue to remember the services. Uh, as you already know, uh, on Sunday mornings, uh, our service will be put up at half past 11. Now, next Sunday, uh, it will be Jude, uh, Jude Cahoon. Jude will be here and Jude will be taking the service and Jude will be preaching the word. So next Sunday, please do tune in and Jude will be uh, ministering God's word uh, online for us. Uh, at the morning service and then on Thursday coming um, we uh, God willing I'll be taking the Bible study uh, there as well at quarter past eight so do uh, please remember these services in your prayers and uh, certainly with your presence and do tune in and we trust that as we meet around God's word whether on a Sunday morning or a Thursday evening that we know the Lord's hand and we know his blessing uh, upon us do I uh, remember to pray for uh, unity amongst us in these days and pray for God's protecting hand uh, to be very much upon each uh, and every one and may I just continue to say as I always have said uh, that I am here in, in the manse and if anybody does need anything please don't hesitate to call or ring and uh, I'll be glad to talk to you maybe it's just a conversation uh, maybe it's something's upon your heart and you would like to speak to me well I'm always here please do ring up and give me a shout and I'll be glad to be able to uh, to speak to you uh, it's hard to believe this is the fourth Sunday in May um, May is quickly moving past and we thank the Lord for his help and his blessing in uh, these morning services so we're going to have a word of prayer and then we'll have a little talk uh, for uh, the boys and girls this morning so let's pray together uh, commit our time to the Lord and then just a little thought for the boys and girls let's pray together our loving and our gracious heavenly father we just want to thank you this morning that we can be found together here uh, meeting one with another but most of all meeting with you we thank you where the twos or threes gather in your name uh, there you are and you're in the midst of them and lord in the different places as we gather today we know that we're we're far more than two or three but yet we certainly need your presence and we need your speaking voice uh, uh, to be be relevant and to be here and to be in the midst and to be speaking into our hearts and to be speaking into our lives we thank you we come before a god who is interested in every one of our lives the psalmist of old said you know when we sit down you know when we stand up you know our thoughts are far off you're acquainted with all of our ways and there's not a word in our tongue but lo O oh lord you know it all together those little casual things that we don't even think of we know that you're interested in you're interested in our walk you're interested in our talk you're interested in every little thing about us and we thank you as we open up our lives before you that we have a god who is interested in us we realize that on a, on a varied number of people that are listening in lord there are various needs and we just pray lord that you will come and that you will meet each and every one at the very point of their need whatever that need is lord we don't know but we know that you know we realize we come to a god who knows every little thing and lord there's not one thing we can hide from you even your word tells us even if we go to the ends of the earth behold O lord thou art there so we thank you with a god who is present here there and everywhere and he meets with all of his people and lord our prayer this morning is that you will meet with each and every one of us and the little thought we bring to the boys and girls we just pray lord that it will be a help and a blessing to them we thank you for their young lives and we know even for them meeting up with friends they, they can't do that going to school they can't do that but lord we know <clears throat> that you'll be with them and lord just help them and encourage them and through the little thought we bring this morning that it will be a help and a blessing to their young hearts and lives keep your hand upon them keep them safe we do pray and lord keep them even in their young years looking up and trusting in you we pray lord for the adults too as we open up and read your word together and spend time around it lord that your word will be a help and a blessing and just a real challenge to us 
We realize the days that we're living in, they can be, they can be difficult, they can, they can be discouraging. But we thank you we come to the God who encourages. We thank you we come to the one who lifts us up. And we thank you we come to one who says, who says like the psalmist of old, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. So Lord, we pray that through your word, we'll know that rich help and that rich blessing coming into our hearts and coming into our lives. We do remember to pray for others in these days, for all of our family circles, for the fellowship of the church here, and Lord, for, for our friends and neighbours and those we come in contact with. We do pray that you'll keep your hand upon them. We thank you for your protecting hand upon so many. And Lord, we realise you're a God who touches, you're a God who heals, you're a God who wonderfully protects. And we come before you and we just ask for your healing touch to be upon those who, who need it. We ask, Lord, for your help to be upon those who need it. And we ask, Lord, just for, for your protecting hand to be very much upon each and every one in the days we're living in. We look to you, Lord, and we pray, O oh Lord, that you will come and that you will wonderfully bless. We thank you, you're a God of the past, that you know what has happened in our lives. We thank you, you're the God of the present, that you know what is happening in our lives. And we thank you afresh as we look forward, that you're a God of the future, that you know what will happen in our lives. Lord, there's nothing that happens by chance. There's nothing, no such thing we know as look or fluke or, or, or anything else. But everything happens according to your plan and according to your wonderful purpose. So we pray, Lord, reveal your plans to us. Keep your hand upon us and bless us, we pray. And now as we go into the service, we just pray that you will lead, guide and wonderfully direct. We pray that everything will be said, will be said under the leading, guiding and the direction of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, as we turn to your word that we truly will, as we long for in these days, rightly divide the word of truth and that it will be a word in season to our hearts and to our lives we do pray. So we look to you and we pray, Lord, have your own perfect way amongst us because we ask it all in your lovely name. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a little thought for uh, the boys and girls uh, this morning. And I don't know whether you did that this year. I was talking to somebody already today uh, who has done this. And maybe you have it done as well. But Jimmy and his daddy decided this year that they would have a garden. And they decided that, that, that they, would, they would plant all different types of vegetables. But one of the main ones they were going to plant was they were going to plant potatoes. Now I don't know whether you like potatoes or not. I don't know whether you prefer maybe them cut up and diced and in chips. Or you like garlic potatoes. Or, or I don't know what way you like them. Maybe you like mashed potatoes. Or as we used to say when we were at home, maybe you like smashed potatoes. So that you mash them up and put butter and milk and other things in them. But everybody likes spuds, don't they? We like potatoes. And we, we, we like to see them. But, but Jimmy never knew how they grew. And his dad said, we'll go out and we'll plant some in the garden and we'll, we'll, we'll see how they grow. But Jimmy couldn't understand how you would take a good potato, something that you could cut and something you could eat, and you just stick it in the ground and, and it would grow. And Jimmy thought to himself, boys, Daddy, Daddy's been queer and foolish here. What type of a clown is he? I'm going to put good spuds in the ground that I could be eating for my dinner. And he says, that's what he's going to do with them. But Jimmy went out anyway and he helped his dad, even though he didn't know uh, what was going to happen. He says, I'll help him anyway. So he went out and they started digging the garden anyway and they dug the garden, which was hard work. And then they tilled it up and they raked it and they got it all nice and level and the clay all smooth. And then they put it up into drills. And that was hard work because you had to throw the, the clay up and you had to build your drills. And I don't know if any of you have built drills. A lot of farmers now do it with big machinery. But Jimmy and his dad, they had to do it with grapes and with shovels and with spades and whatever they had, they were able to do it. But you know, then came out a big box of, of potatoes. And, and as they came out then, Jimmy's daddy said, listen, I'll... Put down, the, put down the spade, I'll make a hole, and you'll be able to drop the potato in. And Jimmy still was looking, he says, I don't know how good this is, but he went on down through the drills, he dug away at the spuds, and he dropped the spuds in, and covered over on top of them. So then they got out the hose and the watered the whole thing, and they put a wee bit of fertiliser around it, and they were ready. 
And his dad says, now, Jimmy, what we have to do is wait. Now, you know, Jimmy, he has no patience and he hates waiting. And he said, listen, Jimmy, you may wait and you may take your time. But, you know, he went in, he went to bed, got up the next day and he thought, I wonder what about the spots? He went out, nothing. The ground was just the very same as he left it. He went out the next day, the very same. He went out the next day, the very same. And this went on for, for at least a fortnight or more. And th there was no spuds, there was nothing coming up. He couldn't see anything. And he decided what he would do. Now his daddy told him not to do this, but he decided he would, he would dig up. And when he dug up and looked in, the potatoes was really just the same. So he filled it all back in. He never told his dad. And, and he says, that's stupid, he says. There's no spuds going to grow out of that. It's not much changed. So he waited another couple of weeks. And, and next thing he saw this wee green shoot. And he thought to himself, oh, that means that there's spuds under it. So he went and he didn't tell his dad again. And he dug around. But you know, th th there was no spuds under it. The, the spot was dying and, and a wee bit, a, a green shoot was coming out of it. He says, how's that going to work? And he put it back down in the ground and he, he covered it over. And, and the stalk kept getting bigger. He went back out in another wee while and he, he dug it up again. But you know, the, the, there was nothing much. The, the potato had fairly died off. The stalks were, 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 were really high and they were green. And he put the whole thing back in. But he decided, I better go tell Daddy what I've been doing. So he went in to tell his daddy after a long time. He went in and he says, Dad, do you know what I did? And his dad turned to me and says, Jimmy, what did I tell you to do? I told you to wait. Now he said, I don't want you going out again. And he says, wait till I call you. We'll go out together and you'll be able to see. So that was all right anyway. One day, Jimmy's dad called him. And he says, Jimmy, come on, come on till I show you. And the two of them went out and he brought out the grape with him and he dug it under the big stalk and he lifted it out. And boys and girls, I'm going to ask you, what do you think was underneath? That's right, because I'm sure you all know there was a pile of other potatoes. There was nearly a bucket full of spuds underneath. And he could see this bit of shriveled skin where the old potato had died and it produced all these other potatoes had come out of the ground. And boys and girls, that reminded me of the truth of the message of the gospel. And I want to read a couple of verses from Philippians 2 to verses 8 to 11. And boys and girls, when I've read them, you can look them up in your Bible and you can see for yourself. And it speaks about the one who had to die so that he could give life and give it abundantly to you and me. As the potato had to go in the ground and the potato had to die and shrivel up so that it could bear other potatoes. You know, boys and girls, the Lord Jesus Christ had to go the whole way to the cross of Calvary. There he had to die so that you and I might have life and have it abundantly. Because it says in, in Philippians 2 and verse 8, and it says, And being found in fashion as a man, that's speaking of the Lord Jesus, he humbled himself. He left the very splendor of heaven, and he came the whole way to earth. He said he became obedient unto death. And what it really means, he said, not my will, not the Lord Jesus' will, but he says, my Father's will, our heavenly Father's will, he, he, he went to do it unto death, even the death of the cross. In other words, I'm prepared, the Lord Jesus said, to go all the way to the cross. Because I know what that can do for mankind. It says, wherefore, in verse 9, God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every other name. And here's what you and I have to do, boys and girls, and mums and dads as well, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And I want to ask you this morning, boys and girls, have you bowed your knee before the Lord Jesus of things on heaven and things on earth and things under the earth? It says, bow the knee before the Lord Jesus and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We need to bow our knee and we need to confess with our mouth that we've sinned, we've, we've all done wrong, we've said wrong things, we've done wrong things. 
We've, we've, we were born in sin, as the scripture says, and shaped in iniquity. And boys and girls, we need to ask the Lord Jesus to come into our heart, to be our Lord and to be our Saviour. So as Jesus went the whole way to the cross, he gave his life so that you and I might have life and we might have it to the full or we might have eternal life. As the potato went and was put in the ground and died, produced others. So Christ died for you and me because he loved us. And boys and girls, you remember that. That's what Christ died. And I trust you'll bow your knee and I trust you'll confess with your mouth and you'll ask the Lord Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and to be your Saviour and have that abundant life and have that eternal life that comes from knowing him. You've been very good now, boys and girls. Thanks for listening. And whenever you're getting your spuds today at dinner time, you remember that Jesus Christ died for you and that you need to accept him into your heart and into your life. Now, I trust, boys and girls, your mums and dads, whoever you're with now, will, will give your sweets, as I say every Sunday. I'm saving a fortune. Uh, I think when you come back, I don't know what I'm going to have to give you to make up for it. But we're looking forward to you coming back sometime. But I'm sure your mums and dads will give you a wee sweet now because you've been so good and you've listened uh, so well there this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, folks, we're going to uh, turn together uh, to Psalm 43. We've been looking at this little psalm now for uh, a number of Sunday mornings. And I want to bring another thought or two uh, this morning uh, from uh, this lovely little uh, psalm. As I said, when I looked at this psalm myself, I was greatly challenged by the little thoughts uh, of who God is. And God is a God of strength, of light and truth we've already looked at. But yet there are a number of other things which the psalmist had to say about his God. And it's wonderful today and in these days that we're able to look to a God of strength, a God of light, a God of truth, and a God of joy, and a God of hope that we're going to look at uh, this morning. So Psalm 43, and let's read this lovely psalm uh, together. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the seed, deceitful and unjust man, for thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. And we do trust that God will bless his precious word to our hearts this morning and as we bring a few thoughts from it in a short way.
Let's just bow together for a short word of prayer before we uh, turn to God's word. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what your word means to us. We, we love the reading of your word. We appreciate all your word says to us and challenges us and blesses us. And Lord, we, we just long to spend more time in your word. And we just pray, Lord, this morning that as we open up your word, it will be a word in season to each and every heart and each and every life. We thank you for this lovely little psalm because it points us directly to you. We realise Hezekiah was going through his own difficulties, his own problems, his own trials, but yet he was able to see the great attributes of our God. And we pray, Lord, even in the midst of these days that we're living in, we'll be able to look to you and we'll be able to see that our God is in charge, that our God's the great God, whether it's strength, light, truth, joy, hope, and Lord, eventually get to the place we realize that we know within our hearts that he is my God. So we look to you and we pray, Lord, you'll bless this psalm to our hearts because we ask it in your lovely name. Amen. Amen. We just turn to this uh, lovely little psalm. As I've said already, uh, this wonderful little psalm deals with, with uh, his thoughts, or Hezekiah's thoughts, I should say, towards God. He was the God of strength, which we've already looked at. Uh, and that's the idea simply that the Lord goes before, the Lord is around us, the Lord is beneath us, and he is above us. So the wonderful thing is we can go in the Lord's strength because the reality is he, he, is, he is surrounding us each and every day of our lives. The second little thought we looked at, he is the God of light. And the wonderful thing about the God of light is the light penetrates the darkness. So it, it puts it away, it goes into the light, and then the light condemns the darkness. And, and the challenge we brought that Sunday morning was simply that we need to be walking in the light. And I trust in these days we're walking in the Lord Jesus Christ. That we know what it is to have our sins forgiven. We know what it is to be ready from heaven. And we're walking in the light. And one day we're going to be walking into the light. The psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And they realized the psalmist wasn't going to fear any evil because he was walking in the shadow. He was walking into the light. And he was walking into the light of eternity with the Lord. So the wonderful thing is we're walking in light. The, the third little thought uh, that we looked at last week is that simply God is truth. And uh, we, we looked at four little things. The first little thought we looked at was God is truth. And that means that what he, when he gives us a promise, he will keep his promise because he is the God of truth. And all that he's promised down through the years, he will perform him. He promised the Savior. And then that was fulfilled when the Lord Jesus Christ came. Uh, Jesus is truth. He, he embodies truth. He personifies truth. He is truth itself. And every truth flows from him. And that's the wonderful thing about the Lord Jesus is that he is truth. I am the way in John 14 and 6, the truth and the life. The third of the thought was the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide us into all truth. And the wonderful thing at salvation, he indwells us. Uh, the believer, his spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. He infills us, he fills us up. Uh, that when we're feeling low or feeling down, the Holy Spirit infills us uh, and, and, and during our life. And then the wonderful thing that he empowers us. He gives us that extra uh, filling for service. And the Holy Spirit uh, takes God's word. He illuminates it to our heart. He blesses it. So the Holy Spirit is, is the instrument that God uses to bless each and every one. The Holy Spirit is truth. He leads us into all truth. And then thy word is truth. And we went into, into 2 Timothy there, went into Psalm 119, just to, to, to bring out the word of God, because it says, rightly dividing in 2 Timothy, the word of truth. And it's important in these days that we rightly divide 
God's precious word. As we move on this morning, we're going to look at verse 4. It says, Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Unto God my exceeding joy. And that's the wonderful thing. He is the God of joy. Joy is a wonderful word, isn't it? Even the thoughts of that word brings tremendous happiness to our hearts and to our lives. And we have a God who longs to bring joy into the hearts and the lives of each and every one of us. And it shows how God has, has invaded the life of the individual. When there is joy, real joy, wonderful joy. And when it has come in to the heart. The word it uses here in this, and the psalmist uses here in verse 4 is the word exceeding joy exceeding joy it's it really means to to go beyond the limits of in other words it's not it's not only joy but it it goes even beyond the limits of joy it's an exceeding joy sadly today joy has seemed to vanish from many lives sadly the, 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 when you look and you study people the, there doesn't seem to be a smile on their faces you know, it's lovely to come into the company of someone who, who has a smile on their face. It's lovely to come into the person and to come into them and see a real joy within their hearts and within their lives. But yet if you study faces many times, you will see unhappiness. Sometimes you will see that the frown. Sometimes you'll realize very quickly being in their company, there's a, there's a discontentment. Sometimes you will realize that there is certainly a lack of joy. And if you look around today, you will see more so frowning and you will see sadness. And there is much sadness to go around. And if you listen to people today, you will hear more complaints and backbiting than anything else. And the reality is, folks, the, the trouble is we've lost the real joy. That God longs to give to us. And I want to ask you the question. What can bring real joy to living? This joy that the psalmist here is speaking about. Unto God my exceeding joy. Jesus said in John 15 and 11. He said these things have I spoken unto you. That my joy might remain in you. And that your joy. May be full. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. This joy that, that we have, <coughs> excuse me, is, is divided up into four things. It's an independent joy. It says here, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy. You see, real joy and exceeding joy is, is that we have the Lord's joy within our hearts and within our lives. It doesn't depend on circumstances. It doesn't depend on people. It doesn't depend upon us, but it depends upon the Lord. My joy might remain in you. It's an independent joy. It's the Lord's joy that is going to be placed in your heart and in my heart. That's the real joy. That the Lord longs to give to us. Not only an independent joy. But it's, it's an inward joy. And it's not an external. You see many people try to get real joy. From external things. You know you buy a new car. It, you, you think boys this will bring real joy. To my heart and to my life. But suddenly it gets a wee bit dated. It gets a wee bit old. And, and, and as I was selling a car one time. The, the man turned to me. And I said you know it's a very good car. He said, have you looked at the number plate lately? You see, the number plate gets older because the years go on. Isn't that right? I have a car there and it's at 09, so, so she's 11 years of age. And folks, they the, the laugh at me now because it's the number plate that tells. And if we're buying a car to give us real joy, it'll go after a while. If we buy a house to give us a real joy, if we do something that else will give us real joy, it'll be there for a while, but it'll be gone. But yet if you turn to John 15, 11, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. You see, it's only a real joy if it's his joy remaining in us. 
If it's his joy remaining in you. If it's his joy indwelling within you. Because it's an independent joy. It's his. Because it's, it's for you. It's inward. It's coming into your heart. And it's coming into your life. It's not a joy of your own. But it's his joy within you. And folks can I say the third little thought. It's a lasting joy. There it says in John 15, 11, these things I've spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. My joy might remain in you. The other thought is might, might abide in you, might, might stay with you, because it's a, it's a lasting joy. And that's the wonderful thing. It's present through all. That's what that word remain means. No matter what the circumstances that joy is going to remain within you, no matter what's happening. I think of a joy and a peace and a look within us. It's, it's, a bit like, it's a bit like the duck. You know, if you see the duck going across the top of the water, you think, aren't they gliding beautifully? But get a picture of underneath the water, they're paddling away. And the joy might remain and you might see just the duck from above the water. You could be paddling your living best to stay above and to stay going. But the reality is that joy might remain. In other words, it will stay the same. And the last little thought here, it's, it's a full joy. May be full. It says that your joy may be full. If you look at it, then it may be complete. You see, because it's his joy living within you, it completes you. You and I are complete once we're, we have the joy of the Lord within our hearts and within our lives. And I want to look this morning just at a sevenfold spring of Christian joy. What does God's word say about a true Christian joy within the heart and within the life? First little thing is there's a joy in believing. If you want to look up 1 Peter 1 and verse 8 it says this. Whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Whom having not seen ye love. Speaking there about the Lord. In whom though now ye see him not. Yet believing. Yet you're trusting. Yet you're believing in him. Yet you are put your faith and your trust. In the Lord Jesus Christ. As your own and personal saviour. That's what brings a real joy. Into your heart and life. Because I'm believing. I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ personally. And all of these things flow from, from a relationship with God. Real joy flows from our relationship with God because we're believing and we're trusting in him. And folks, if you have that belief and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ personally, well then folks, you have a real joy. You have a real joy. There's joy in believing. Secondly, there's, there's joy in abiding. In John 15 and verse 11 that we looked at earlier, it says that my joy might remain. And that's what that word to abide means. It, mean, it means to remain in you. In other words, this joy, regardless of, we looked at a minute ago, regardless of all the circumstances around, that joy is going to remain within your heart and within your life. You see, sometimes when circumstances are brought into our life, the first thing that goes is joy, isn't it? There, there's no joy there. How many times have, even as a pastor, I've been speaking to people in the same area, my joy has gone. And folks, the reality is that, that, that when you look at the circumstances, because they're not trusting and believing in Christ, because they're not allowing him to take over everything in their life, that joy is not abiding. It's not remaining. But he said, listen, that my joy might remain within you. Because there's joy in abiding. The third little thought here in scripture that says there's joy in asking. In John 16 and 24 it says, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Isn't that a sad reality for many that have never come before the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. They've never asked him for anything. He says, listen, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Here he's asking in prayer. There, there's joy in the place of prayer. 
You know, I can't understand how, how, how many will not come to the place of prayer because it brings such joy and peace to my heart. I remember some of the prayer meetings I went to many years ago, even even as, as a young teenager and even, even nine and ten years of age. And you know, you love to be there because it brought a great joy into your heart. There's joy in prayer and there's wonderful joy in answered prayer. When you see God coming and God wonderfully answer prayer, that brings joy to your heart. Many a Thursday night you'd, you'd hear here in the prayer meeting as we, we sat around, you'd hear them speaking of, of how God wonderfully answered prayer. You see, there's joy in asking because God wonderfully hears and God wonderfully answers prayer. Folks, I wonder, have you been asking? I wonder, have you been asking with expectancy? Is that bringing a real joy into your heart? Because you know that God is going to hear and answer prayer. Fourthly, there's, there's joy in listening. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And these things I speak in the world. You know, it's wonderful to be able to listen and to hear God speak. You know, up to these number of weeks, we, we've all been living in a, in a very busy world. I know myself, I think in the, in the month of February there, I was only in the house a kind of two nights over that month. I was out at meetings or, or, or out at something else, but only two nights in the busyness. And sometimes, folks, even in ministry, you're, you're that busy, you don't have time to sit and you don't even have time to, to listen for God's speaking voice. We think of the scriptures and, 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 and it says, uh, it said of Samuel of old, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And folks, we need to be those who, who are listening. He spoke to us in the past and we've heard it. He speaks to us in the present. And folks, in the days ahead, he, he will continue to speak. Folks, if he spoke, if he spoke to you in the past, have you, have you heard him or have you missed him? Is if he's speaking to you in the present, are, are you listening to hear him? And folks, will you be listening in the days ahead to hear his speaking voice? Because he still speaks through his word. But many are sadly not interested in listening. Joy in listening. That your joy may be full. That it may be full. The third little, four, sorry, the fifth little thought here, there's joy in obeying. In John 13 and 17 it says if you know these things happy are ye if ye do them. There's tremendous joy in simply obeying the Lord. In the scripture there's a lovely little verse and it says to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. And many times within, within our hearts and lives, the problem is we lose out in our joy because we're living in disobedience and not in obedience to the Lord. To obey is better than sacrifice. You see, many people are prepared to sacrifice. They might be prepared to sacrifice their time for the Lord. They might be prepared to sacrifice in giving for the Lord. That word sacrifice is the giving up of something valuable for the sake of something else. So that the item given up will attain a great personal cost. You know we're prepared to sacrifice. But the scripture says to obey is far better than sacrifice. To hearken than the fat of rams. You know plenty were able to put the, the rams on the altar. They were able to put the bullock on the altar. But you know that, that, that is symbolic. You know what he's saying. Listen will you simply obey me. To listen to God. To obey him is far better than all of these things because there's joy in obedience. You know, I remember speaking to different people and they came to me and they said, Mervyn, you know, I'm living in disobedience to the Lord and I'm not happy. God forbid that we should be living in disobedience to him because it will bring unhappiness. Obedience brings joy. The sixth little thought is that there is joy in suffering. You know, it's very unusual to bring the word joy and the word suffering together, isn't that? And you'll say to me, Mervyn, where on earth would, would you get that in Scripture? Should, there's no such thing as joy and suffering. There is. 
when it's for the Lord's cause and for his witness. There in Acts 5 and 41 it said, They departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to, to suffer shame for his name. You know, there's many things that when you're involved in the Lord's work, you, you can suffer shame because of his name. There's many times you'll maybe go out and to speak to people about the Lord. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to know. I know in my own experience, there was many times the doors have been slammed when, when you went to because people didn't want to hear. But the reality is there's many times that we will suffer and will suffer shame because of the cause of Christ and because of the name of Christ. And right down through over the years, Christians have suffered because they're lifting up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But yet these early disciples counted it worthy, worthy to suffer shame. That was a joy in suffering for the cause of Christ. And the last little thought here, there, there is a joy in finishing well. There is a joy in finishing well. In Acts 20 and 24 it says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto, me, unto myself, so I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God, that I might finish my course with joy. What, what Paul was speaking about here in the book of Acts was simply a race. And, and he was going to come to the end of that race with joy. In other words, he had started off in the race. He was continuing on in the race. And he was going to finish the race. And he was going to finish well. That he might finish it with joy. Can I say, folks, a great challenge to me over the years has been, has been Paul's testimony. And I know the folks in the church have heard me quoting this many times from 2 Timothy 4 verses 7 and 8. And Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will give me on that day. But not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul's testimony was divided up into three things. He said, I have fought a good fight. Isn't that a tremendous thing to know that, that we're in a fight, aren't we? we? We have an adversary. We're in a battle. Our adversary, the devil, the scripture says, a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So folks, we, we are in a battle. We, we are in a fight. And that's why Paul said, listen, I have fought the good fight. The lovely little word sometimes I tend to forget is, is good. You know, to be in the battle for the Lord is a good battle. It's a right battle. It's a true battle. It's the only battle because we're doing a work for the Lord. And that's why Paul says, I have fought the good fight. See, the hymn writer said, am I a soldier of the cross? A follower of the Lamb. You see, we're, we're soldiers for him. I, I have fought a good fight. And then he goes on like, like the race here in, in, in Acts 20 and 24. He said, I have finished my course. He said, listen, I, I have finished my course. He said, I have come, I have come to the end. I, I am coming near the finishing line and I have finished. And I have finished well. And folks, can I say, it's important in these days that we, we finish well. You know, we not only start on the race, we continue on the race and we finish well. I remember a number of years ago at home, there was, there was it was the talk of the area, but there was, there was a, a horse and, and he was going to win this race. Before he even went to the race, he had been, he, he had been set up to win it. And he was told to just listen, if he's put at the starting line, put all the money you have on it because this horse is going to win. And I know people who had put money on it and our workman at home, he had put money on it. And he came in one day and he says, I'm going to make a fortune. And you know, that, that the next day he came back in and he was, he was upbeat the day before, he was downbeat the next. And daddy turned to him and he said, did the horse not win, Andy? And he says, no, he says, the, the, the horse didn't win. 
And he said, what happened? He said, the horse went along the course. But he said, there was one part of the track where he had to, he had to veer to the right and go down that side. But he said, he never veered across and he went down the left. He said he finished before all the rest, but he said he finished the wrong side of the finishing post and he lost the race. That's why Paul is saying here, I have fought a good fight. I have finished. I have kept going to the end. I have finished between the posts and I have kept the faith. This is not speaking about our faith or our trust in Christ. This is simply speaking here about being faithful. And the one greatest thing that, that any, any, I suppose, uh, pastor, or minister, whatever title you want to put on, you know, folks, reality is, is those who are faithful within the fellowship. And folks, what he's saying here, listen, I have fought the good fight. It's a great fight. I have finished my course. I have kept between the posts and I'm finishing. I'm finishing well. But I have kept the faith. I have been faithful through it all. It's not a wonderful thing to have been faithful through it all. You see, there's joy in finishing well. And there's joy in being faithful. And I trust like Timothy's, uh, Paul's testimony here in Timothy. That we not only say we fought the good fight, we've finished the course, we've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. There's a crown waiting, that's what he was saying. For those who had fought the good fight, for those who had finished the course, for those who had kept the faith. But he says, not to me only, but unto everyone else who longs and waits for his appearing. I wonder, do you have this real joy within your heart, within your life? Are you believing in him? Because there's joy in believing and trusting and knowing him personally. There's joy in abiding or remaining in him. And I trust we're remaining and abiding. There's joy in asking. Listen, go to him in prayer and ask that we may receive, that you may have joy to its fullness. There's joy in listening. Listen, folks, we need to be listening for his voice in the days we're living in. There's joy in obeying. It's not only the point in listening to him, but we need to be obeying. And folks, whether in that obedience there's suffering, but there's joy in suffering for his name and for his sake. And I trust, folks, we'll finish well because there is tremendous joy in finishing well. The hymn writer said, Joys are flowing like a river. Since the Comforter has come, he abides with us forever, makes the trusting heart his home. And folks, joys are flowing. The Comforter has come. He abides with us forever, makes the trusting heart his home. He is the God who gives exceeding joy to us all. Amen. We trust God will bless his word to our hearts again this morning. Let's bow for a word of prayer and we'll just commit our time to the Lord in closing. Our loving and our gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again this morning for the privilege we have of being able to meet here together. We thank you for everyone who has been tuning in and listening to your word. And we just pray afresh, O oh Lord, that your word will be a help, it will be a blessing, and most of all, it will be a challenge to them. Lord, our reality in these days is that we long to have your joy, that real joy, that wonderful joy, that true joy, within our hearts and within our lives. And no matter what's happening outside or what the circumstances of life hold, that joy will ever remain the same. We thank you you're the same yesterday. We thank you you're the same today. And you're the same forever. You're the God of the past, of the present. And you're the wonderful God of the future. And that simple little thought in your word brings tremendous joy to us. To know that our times, my times, they are in your hands. So we look to you and we pray, Lord, keep your hand upon us. And very much in these days, your protecting hand, lead us, guide us, direct us, keep us on the right path. And Lord, like Paul of old, that we'll finish well because there's tremendous joy 
in finishing well. Part us now with your blessing. And Lord, even as we spend time over this day, sometimes we, we, we forget that it's Sunday because every day seems to be the same. But Lord, this is a day you've set aside. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will, you will help us in this day to worship, to praise, to, to spend time in your presence and to, to lay hold upon you because you are the God. You are the God, the one and only one. Because we ask it all in your lovely name. Amen.